Hi, I'm Dana and today I want to talk about pretty privilege and especially in regards to being autistic and creating content online because I keep seeing little bits and pieces about this on TikTok and it makes me think and it's one of the things that I've had on my mind pretty much the entire time I've had a YouTube channel because it's one of those things where I made YouTube, we're getting straight into it, no disclaimers or anything here apparently, but I've been making YouTube content since I was like 12 or 13, like it's been a really really long time for me and there's been various points that I've tried to take it more seriously and it just never worked out no matter how much effort I put in, no matter how much time I put in, no matter what type of content I went for, it didn't feel like it ever went anywhere, like it didn't ever go anywhere, the most I ever had was 52 subscribers. The thing is, I obviously I'm late diagnosed autistic, I didn't know that I was autistic during all the years that I was doing that, so I was focused on completely different types of content and I I'd already started losing like quite a significant amount of weight when I found out I was autistic and by the time I felt comfortable enough to make content and actually talk about it I'd lost like a significant amount of weight and you know like I'd lost enough weight that I was at a point where I could be considered like conventionally attractive or whatever you know and I don't want to sit here and be like I'm conventionally attractive but I am also you know thin white femme presenting like let's not beat around the bush you know I spent the vast majority of my life being very heavily overweight and being quite horribly bullied for it and there's definitely a massive massive part of my brain that wonders if I would actually have the subscribers I have now and have the community that I have now and have this channel and get the attention that I get and whatever if I was still fat if, if I wasn't now at a point where people can consider me to be conventionally attractive you know and I feel like it was one of the big things that I noticed when I started researching autism and looking for like content from other autistic people because I really really desperately wanted to find like just some other woman out there that was like me and I was finding like Chloe Hayden and Paige Lael and uh Steph says a bunch of people I don't really engage with anymore and like as far as I'm aware they're mostly still alright but you know like I was finding these like incredibly incredible incredibly pretty people because it does feel like that is what is pushed in the autistic community online and not necessarily by like audience members or whatever but like just when I was searching for autistic content from women it was incredibly pretty women that I was finding but women that put on a lot of makeup that dress up very nicely and everything and there's no reason that they shouldn't do that you know it's not any sort of like I'm not trying to shit on them I think we're all different and it's all completely cool to be but I also don't think that it's any sort of like coincidence that it's often the most attractive you know conventionally attractive whatever you want to say the most stereotypically attractive I don't know the most like aesthetically pleasing to look at autistic people that I actually listen to that people actually want to engage with that people are actually willing to watch content from and listen to about autism and obviously I'm chronically online so I do often see it in that sort of perspective but I have also obviously had the experience of growing up being seen as quite unattractive and then finding out I'm autistic and then suddenly being seen as quite See, this is horrible because I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm so pretty, but I'm also aware that like when ticking off boxes, I fit a bunch of things that fit for like the stereotype of conventionally attractive. There's a whole bunch of shit that I'm not going to like get picked on for anymore, you know? And in like losing the weight and getting to a point where like I do tick the boxes for what's conventionally attractive, I've seen a massive shift in the way that people behave towards me and the way that people treat me. And obviously a huge amount of that is just fat phobia and has nothing to do with me being autistic. But in the realm, like in, through the lens of, of the fact that I'm an autistic person it is absolutely insane to me how so many of my like see that's the thing is their quirks now their cute little quirky things about me their little quir personality quirks aren't I just so fun and interesting but when I was fat I was a freak you know when, when people didn't find me attractive I was just a weirdo when I was awkward around people and when I couldn't socialize with people they, they just took like I literally had people turn their backs on me and just like like they would be stood in a group and I would try to join and I'd be a bit awkward and they would literally just close up the group and not let me be a part of it and I'm not saying that will never happen now because I'm skinny but it hasn't happened you know and it happened and that happened multiple times when I was fat you know and there's lots of little moments like that where I think it's very very apparent that people are way more willing to just give me a chance because they like the way that I look because they or not even that they like the way that they look that I look but because they look at me and they don't dislike the way that I look off the bat you know and I think there's a very big expectation based, like on, on how I'm going to behave and how I'm going to act and the type of person that I'm going to be based on the way that I look and the way that people like perceive me based on how I look and I never manage to fulfill it I feel like I disappear 
I feel like I disappoint people all the time because I'm just not what they expected. I'm not what they were looking for. They don't know what the fuck is going on with me and nor do I. And it's... And growing up, I was taught that they were like very negative situations, you know, they were the situations where I was straight up bullied and abused and had people say horrible things to me or like it was straight up have someone like just make me feel like I was worth absolutely nothing. And all of a sudden, I can have those exact same situations and people are just so willing to give me benefit of the doubt and to try and help me out and to just try to like cater and accommodate a little bit extra without knowing that I'm autistic or anything. It's just because they don't dislike looking at me, you know? And I think that's one of the things that like sh shocks me most with pretty privileges, like the whole, is that I don't have to dress up. I don't have to actively be pretty, you know? I just have to tick off enough of the boxes to be conventionally attractive enough that people don't dislike looking at me and then they leave you alone and just let you live your life and do what you want. And it's insane. But another place, and one of the big reasons that I wanted to talk about this, like specifically from like the autism lens, is that I feel like there's so many people whose experiences and just entire people as a whole that are completely ignored, especially online, especially within autistic communities, because they're not nice to look at, frankly. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and call anybody ugly in the same way that I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I'm so pretty. But you know, they don't tick enough of the boxes off for, for people to give them the fucking time of day. And it's wild and it's weird, I don't like it. Like, I've seen so many comments from people saying that, like, people like Chloe Hayden and Paige Vale, and, like, even, like, I've, I've had some other comments as well that we don't, that we're not able to put across what it's really like to be autistic because we're pretty and we have this and we have that and we experience this and that and so on and so forth and that we're taking away from other people's experiences because other people have a different type of autism and there's a point, like, I don't agree with any of that but there is a point to which I can see where people are coming from because it is a case of, like, if, if the pretty people that people want to look at weren't making the content, then you would have to watch content from the other people. But also, like, they're not watching the content from the other people. I don't think that other people not being there would encourage them to watch the content, you know? And I think it's the type of thing where people really, like, on the whole, I just think it's real odd the way that people react to the way that people look in content, you know? I'm not trying to shave anyone with this, like, we all do it. We all find certain people attractive and want to look at them for longer and stuff. Like, I'm not saying that, like, it's wrong per se, but I am saying that I think most of us would benefit from unpacking that a little bit and being a little bit more aware of why we're choosing to watch content and why we're choosing to engage with certain content creators. And if it is based on what they're saying or what their content is, or if it is just that they look nice. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Like if you're following a makeup artist or a fucking fashion person or whatever, it's gonna be because they look nice. We all love an aesthetic. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that I think it's also really important to just listen to people and hear what people have to say and not make every judgment based on how someone looks. And obviously that's very difficult to do online because the first impression is a thumbnail of how somebody looks. But I, I think it's much more important to like read the title and make the decision based on that than just be like, well, they look hot. But I think that it has created quite like an uneven divide within the community that a lot of people are able to see and pick up on and can't necessarily discuss or like, it's very hard to bring up and talk about without it sounding like you're like, creating two sides or like you're just trying to shit on people for being pretty or for being this or for being that you know like I, I am trying really hard to bring it up in like quite an objective I think way I think having had like the experience of two sides of having grown up being made to feel like I was completely like the ugliest person on earth and completely worth nothing due to not being pretty enough to having this switch flip where like suddenly I get quite a lot of nice comments about my appearance and people are nice about it and it's it's something I'm still quite uncomfortable with and definitely still wrapping my head around and dealing with. But it's one of the things where I do think it makes it a lot easier for me to see like what's going on there. You know, I've been on both sides. I, it's very difficult to have a perspective that you haven't experienced. And it's one of the few things that I have experienced from two different perspectives. And to wrap this up as well, I think it's very difficult because one of the things to consider is that pretty privilege isn't just about someone's like face or body type. It's sort of like the whole deal a lot of the time. And I think that's where it can get quite tricky because obviously, the way we look is a lot of self-expression, but for autistic people, a lot of it's also like, well, I can deal with this in a sensory way. And I know that personally, there's some clothes that I will not buy because in my mind, they are stereotyped as like autistic clothes. Like they are clothes that disabled people wear. And as much as like, that's a horrible thing to be thinking and that's something for me to unpack and work on, there's still, 
items of clothing that I don't buy because I do feel like the way that they are stereotyped and the way that I would look in them and the way that people would perceive me in them, I would be treated less nicely because I wouldn't be seen as in like such an attractive light as I am, you know? Like I'm not someone who personally chooses to like dress up particularly nicely. Like I don't, I like, I like fashion for self-expression. I don't really care that much a lot of the time about how it looks on my body. I'll have the odd time when I'm going out or something. I'm like, I want to look hot, you know? But for the most part, I don't really care all that much. But even with that being said, there's some things that I won't wear because I do think it'd sort of like make, make me look autistic. But the fact of the matter is that those, those types of items are stereotyped that way and I think of them that way because a lot of autistic people use them and wear them. And why do why why is that? Because they're good for sensory issues, because it works for autistic people, blah blah blah. Obviously there's a need to unpack the stereotype there and to unpack why I see it as a negative thing and all of that type of thing. But it is also just still the thing of like, well if I'm receiving like seeing it and perceiving it in that way, other people probably are too. Like I probably picked that up from somewhere when it comes to that type of thing, you know? I I ninety nine percent of our thoughts are not self contained realistically. Most things are inspired by somewhere, most things come from something. I do think that some of it is that some like autistic stereotypes, autistic traits or whatever have just been like deemed as being unattractive and weird and I happen to be someone who is able to work around that and not have to use those items and not have to dress that way or whatever else, you know? I'm struggling to put my foot I'm struggling to fully get my thoughts into words on this one, but it it relates to like, I don't know, I don't want to name names because I don't want to seem like I'm picking on anyone because I, I really don't mean anything negative about anybody that, I, I don't mean anything negative by anything in this video to be completely honest with you, but there's definitely some people that I've seen on TikTok who I can't tell if they're being bullied or not, quite frankly because they're open about being autistic, they talk about being autistic, you know, and they do their hair and they do their makeup and they look really pretty. And then they, they'll wear items that are like sort of stereotypically autistic, at least in my mind of no one else's. And all of the comments will be like, yeah, slay baby. But it's like so many emojis and so many comments from people saying the same types of compliments that I'm like, I can't tell if they're bullying her or not, you know? Like I feel pretty much completely neutrally to her. I, I, kind of like her, mostly don't care, you know, but I've seen several people that are like sort of that type of person that are getting all these comments that are compliments. I don't know if it's me being a bitch, quite frankly, but it it feels like even though technically they, they're ticking off the boxes of what it is to be conventionally attractive and they should be benefiting from fitty privilege, they have just these few things that like give them away and people can pick up on it and people aren't nice anymore you know and like i say i could be wrong maybe they are genuinely supportive and they actually are fans and like it is a nice situation that i've just misread wrong because of my past experiences i don't think that's the case you know so yeah this has been another quite rambly one i'm very burnt out i'm very tired and i have a lot of things to do life is hard but we're getting through it um yeah that's the end of the video. If you want to see more content that's like sort of similar to this, you can like and subscribe. If you want to see some TikTok content of me, I post on TikTok most days, so you can follow me over there. It'll be linked down below along with my Instagram. I will also link my Patreon if anyone wants to join me over there. It's a lovely little community. I am actually going to fucking get back to your guys' messages and change my end screen and actually focus on Patreon. I feel really terrible about how little I focus on Patreon, I don't lie to you. I'm going to like really fucking going on that soon. Um, I'm going to do a little bit like really soon and I'm going to like go hard on it in a little bit but soon in the grand scheme of things so if you want to follow there you can if you want to do like i also post videos there early so you get early content you can also do me a one-time donation on ko-fi if you choose to if you want to there's no press you don't have to it's really lovely when people do it's very very much appreciated and a few of you have recently and it's really appreciated thank you very much but you don't have to there's no pressure there's no like I i'll be fine you know <laughs> Like, if you want to, you can. It's I, I do make a lot of content for free, but, like, I chose to make content for free, you know? The whole point is that you don't have to pay for it if you don't want to. But if you choose to, it's linked there. It's it's absolutely whatever. Do it if you want to. Whoever you are and wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year, and I will see you again in a couple of days. I don't know why I did that. I felt kind of weird about it. Okay, tell me about it.